The universe is so vast that the more we move forward, the more we figure out. 500 million light years away, a star explodes. 200 light years on the other direction, an exoplanet is discovered. These distances are unbelievable. We talk about millions of light years and we forget what's going on around us. And the cool thing is around us, it's just as interesting. Just near us, about eight and a half light years away, there is a star that many people don't know what it is. We are talking about the Sirius star. It's good to know that the Sirius star is the brightest star in the night sky. When you look at the sky at night, one star stands out as the brightest, and that's the Sirius star. But when you look at the star with a telescope, you'll see there is a tiny star next to it. These two are extremely close to each other, and this is how their orbit looks like. And the distance between them is about 20 astronomical units, which is the distance between the Sun and Uranus. But on Earth with a naked eye, it seems like it's just one star. First, let's talk about the main Sirius, called the Sirius A. The size of this star is about two and a half times the size of the Sun, and its mass is about two times. The giant size of this star, and being so close, about eight and a half light years away from us, it allows us to see it extremely bright at night. Not only is Sirius A bigger than the Sun, it's extremely hotter and much more brighter. The temperature of the Sun is about 5,770 Kelvin, but Sirius A has a temperature of 9,940 Kelvin, which is almost double, and that is why it's extremely brighter than the Sun. If there is a planet next to this star and it looks towards the solar system, it won't see the Sun as bright as we see the Sirius A. Some astronomers believe that Sirius A is much older than the Sun because it's producing iron in its core. And they continue and say, in about 600 million years, it will turn into a red supergiant. And the same thing will happen to our sun, but in more than 1 billion years. But what about the smaller star next to it, Sirius B? Unlike Sirius A, this is not really a star, but a white dwarf. And if you want to know more about white dwarfs, we've made a separate video about it. Sirius B is the first white dwarf that humans have discovered. This German astronomer by the name of Friedrich Wilhelm Bessel discovered this white dwarf in the year 1844. He was the first person to realize that Sirius is actually two stars rather than one. One is a white dwarf and one is a normal star. With the equipment he had available to him, he realized that the orbit of this star is very awkward and there's something else there. After discovering this, he wrote a theory about it. And then eventually, 18 years later, many other astronomers tested his theory and realized he was right all along. Sirius B is a white dwarf that has the highest mass than any other white dwarf humans have discovered throughout history. Even though it's much smaller than the sun, but it has the same mass and its size is very similar to Earth. Imagine the mass of the Sun compressed into the size of Earth. Even though Sirius B has the same mass as the Sun, but it's much dimmer and it has about 24% of the luminosity as the Sun. 
even though it's not that bright and small, but it has an extremely high temperature. Its temperature reaches 25,200 Kelvin, which is about 5 times the temperature of the Sun and 2.5 times the temperature of Sirius A. In the video we introduced to you guys, we also talked about black dwarfs. Black dwarfs are basically the end result of a white dwarf. In the end, a white dwarf will always turn into a black dwarf, but that's after billions of years. Even though in 1862 astronomers realized that Sirius is actually two stars, they had no pictures to prove it until the year 2003. And the main reason was, the light of Sirius A was too bright for you to see Sirius B. Eventually, in 2003, the most advanced telescope at that time, the Hubble, took this photo. It's a nice photo, isn't it? But what you're seeing is Sirius A. Sirius B, the smaller one, is right here. Let's continue. Sirius is a star you could see from anywhere on Earth. And it's the brightest one from everywhere. And that is why from thousands of years ago, ancient civilization have written about this star. Even ancient Egypt has written about it. In ancient Egypt, they named this star the Nile Star. Ancient China, India, Mesopotamia, and ancient Greece have spoken about this star. There are also some weird writings from ancient times that weird out scientists. They have written that this bright star shines red sometimes. You can find ancient Egyptian and Chinese writing that say the Sirius star turns red. Modern astronomers really study the Sirius star to see what could cause a red star, but unfortunately, they haven't figured anything out. NASA has looked at the Sirius star up close as well, and they mainly look for exoplanets, but they haven't found any planets either. An interesting thing is that these two stars are heading our way at a speed of about 7 kilometers per second, and that means the more we move forward, the brighter these stars will get. 7.6 kilometers a second is very low, but I'm talking about in space speed. This speed shows us that for the next thousands of years, the Sirius star will remain the brightest one. Even though most of the discoveries in space have happened in this century, but humans have been studying the stars from an extremely long time ago, even with the tools they had back then. During the Achaemenid Persian Empire, they knew the star and called it the Tyr. And in the Book of Kings, the star is named Tyr as well. In ancient Greece, they would tell this group of stars the dog star because the way it's laid out, it looks like a dog. You might ask why doesn't NASA tell the James Webb to look at this direction and study it a little bit more? We've said in previous videos that the James Webb telescope has a schedule that has been set up for a year and they might be doing more important things with it and NASA does not release the schedule of the James Webb. It might all of a sudden start studying the Sirius star, you never know. There are some beliefs around the stars as well. Like Homer said in ancient Greece, that the Sirius star is put there to keep the demons away from us at night. In an ancient Persian book, Avesta, it says that the Sirius star brings rain. If there is a planet next to these two stars, is it possible for life? They say the chances of life is very rare because there are two stars rather than one. Either way, if you look at the night sky and see the brightest star there, just know that you're looking at the Sirius star.